you cannot believe how easy one of these conversions are. I mean, it's, it's super, I mean, super simple. Everything's straightforward. <coughs> oh, never have any issues. Everything cooperates. It's, uh, I mean, I wish I could do one of these every, every day. Hey guys welcome back to the channel right here we're still working on a 79 beetle yes we ditched the the last episode it was a marathon but uh if you want to watch it go for it uh stripped out all the factory fuel injection um and we are left with basically a standard upright engine um this one you know this episode i'm hoping we're gonna get this car running and uh and driving so what we have to do is finish buttoning up well obviously you just saw me take them off Got to put the dual carbs on, finish the engine, run a fuel line. Um, I think I'm going to change the coil. I have another coil. Uh, distributor, uh, modify the fuel system because we got to put a low pressure pump in. Uh, what else are we doing? Oh, and I still got to rewire the, uh, or put together a steering column. So that's good. And then hopefully we can take it out on the road. So, you know, it, we're almost there. Uh, you just Hopefully this is the final push. Uh, I do know the customer has a com uh, had a complaint when he was driving the car or his wife was driving the car years ago that had a wobble. So, you know, if you watch the thing videos, awesome. But let me get, uh, let me get set up. Uh, I'm kind of already set up. I mocked some stuff up already uh, to get these carbs ready to go on. Uh, I'm probably going to just kind of do it and not be so informative. Uh, just because I do have a dual carb video already. It's the, it's the exact same thing. Um, like I said, I, I preset a bunch of stuff so I could just slap it on. I mean, use it as instructions if you want, but uh, I'm not going to tell you where every nut and bolt goes. Just, you know, use your use the eye hole so you can could, you could figure it out. I, I have faith in you guys. So let me, uh, let, 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 let's start putting this together. All right, guys. If you didn't know, if you've, or if you have never done dual carbs, they're, you get two of the same carburetor. Uh, these are the, whatever, e, e, EPC 34s, the empties. Um, and it's your job to figure out what's gonna be left, what's gonna be right. Because they are literally both the exact same carburetor. It's up to you to set them up as a left carb and a right carb. And that's what all the fun linkage and everything else is for. Um, with that said, we're going to pick this one first, and this is going to be a carburetor on the side, and then we'll pick the other one, and it's going to be a carburetor on the other side. We'll just put that there, too. These fun little brackets go on, and then you'll have a throttle. Which, which way is this thing? Boom, boom. This goes that way. So we have to put the uh, push on as well. There we go. Got to put the little tabby guy on. Eh, that's a cool background. I don't know if you can see it. My, my computer finally reloaded. All right. Not that draw. This draw. So, put on your cam. Boom, boom. For vroom, vroom. Block plate, nut. I'm just gonna gently snug. Because just in case we have to take it all hell apart again. Um, yeah. Also, I'm gonna preset the uh, carburetor. Basically back it off all the way till the, uh, oh, I gotta put the spring on. Derp. 
Going well so far. Going well. All right. Plate. Wavy washer. Boop. Nut. Or bolt. Wavy washer. Boop. This is the beginning of making a, if you're looking at it, what the hell side am I working on? Oh, crap. Left hand side carburetor, driver side. Tight, but not crazy, because you will strip these things if you're using, you know, He-Man strength. Spring. Spring to get clipped on to this guy right there. Boop, boop. A little tension. Vroom, 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 vroom. And like I said, uh, I'm just going to semi-preset this thing. So once it touches, which is right about there, I'm going to give it a half a turn, full turn. Give it a full turn. I feel adventurous. All right, so this, this car is pretty much set up. Vacuum port, um, plug it. You can use them for vacuum advance. I don't ever recommend it. Because it doesn't, I mean, it pulls, but it doesn't pull as hard. Uh, if you tee them together, it sort of equalizes it, and you can also use it for your vacuum. Anyway, do, do, do what you will, what you want, if that makes any sense, because it probably doesn't. So, all right, this carb, set up. Gasket. There's a bunch of flies right here. Gasket, and we'll just chunk it on. Pull this out. Throw it in place. All right, this side. Same, same as the other, except, you know, backwards. Washer, washer. Install. Where's the cam plate? Just go on like show. I'll do something semi-smart. I will set this up so I'm not holding the carburetor like a dopey. Okay. That was a 10. Like I said, don't, don't run it down with a power tool. It's testing you. Uh, I know, I know, I know. You're, you're like, oh, you just told me not to do that thing. And you were going to do that thing. I wasn't. Because it wasn't the right size. Would you just start? Thank you. And same thing for this side. Just snug. I completely forgot what I did on the other side. Was it two turns? Half, one, two. Turn and a half on this one. Half, one, whatever. All right, that should be good. Oh yeah, I could put these in. Rubber bushes, or plastic bushes, the bushings. If you, ever, if you never know where they go, they go in there. And you just gently, you know, gently put them in. 
then we'll slam it in. Ugh. Yeah, you can sort of see. I don't know why I'm struggling. I mean, I didn't, it's not like I bolted the damn thing down. Tap, 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 tap. Tap. Gently use your press. Just, just fish. Perfect. All right, where are the wires I need? All right, we got charge wires and everything else. I'm seeing how awkward they are. And maybe if I have to do something with them. All right, that's oil pressure. That's coil. And those are chargers. Charging. Charge. Charge cables. Get off of there. I am. They're just cracking. All right, let me cut back the sheet um, and see how bad this wire is going back because might, might just have to run a new ignition wire. Don't wanna, but might just have to. Great. That run's gonna suck, but it's cooked under the dash, I mean, We'll see how far it goes back there because I still have to cut the sheath there. And if it's damaged far back in here, I guarantee it's cooked all the way through and you know, cooked out where I can see it too. So let me do some investigating. I'll be right back and we'll get, we'll get back to putting this thing together. This wire can go away because that's for air conditioning, which no longer exists. It got deleted. It's a pain in the butt. New ignition wire. Uh, ran it through the car, so that black wire is no longer a thing. I can actually, well, I would say I could dead leg that whole thing, but I cannot due to the fact of the oil lines. Oil, oil pressure is still in there, but that's fine. These are now dead. I'll end up clipping them. Um, I still got to peel back the sheathing. Actually, oil pressure seems like it's fine up here. It's just dry rotted down lower, but all right. Battery. Ba Why are you so tight? Good. I'll probably end up putting clamps on. Try to get as much wiring as I can. That'll work. I'll have to go back and splice something and I will, but charging systems there. This again, oil pressure, that's up there. This wire, useless. This new wire, well, it's good, but useless for right now. Uh, bolt down the carburetors, I guess. Uh, linkage rods, let's throw that in. You can go on. You're an outer. You can go on. And put your end on. Just throwing this on right now, just see how everything, if everything's gonna be, you know, Cool, or do I have to move stuff? Like wiring. All right, throttle. Throttle will work there. Throttle will be fine there. We'll just, just plug you into something. There. Can I get away with this cable? 
I might be able to. We're going to try it. If I don't have to move it, I'm not going to. There, I said it. All right, let's, uh, that all seems to work. I might lengthen this wire. Just, I don't know. I'm aesthetically not pleased. And I think I, uh, I, I didn't think I lied. I did lie or what have you. Um, they did provide 12 millimeter nuts to put these intakes on. But if you did watch the, uh, the video, you could see how tight they were. I was having a problem getting uh, my 11 mils on there, which are four intakes and like exhaust systems, they're brass. Just catch a thread. Please. All right, reverse rhodesian. Not gonna work any better. Now I got something poking me. Mm-hmm. Yep, mm-hmm, nope. Mm -hmm. Yep, maybe. Mm-mm. Oh, I will send you. There, yeah, threaten it. All right. So this is my other videos. It's my special wavy wrench. It, uh, it allows you to actually get in here and, tight, and tighten these down. It's precisionly ground around for the carburetor. <laughs> All right, this is, this is what I was talking about. The stock part where they have you put the spring, it, it doesn't give tension. So you put this bracket back on here and now snap closed. I fought these not actually returning to rest. This side's fine because it pulls that way. So she always goes closed. Um, I think I've have crossed them before just to get more tension because You'll be tuning on them and it's it, like, especially sinking the carbs. And what happens is you, you get it to hang. So you're constantly either pulling up on the bar. I got those out of sync. Uh, you're pulling up on the bar, trying to, you know, get, get them, you know, fi figure, figure it out. Basically is what you're trying to have them do or have the carbs do. There should be enough flex in that for me just to kick it onto the angle I need. All right. Those are on outsides, 12s. Aircool Motorworks Tool and Dieco Company. Yet another custom tool that I can't remember ever needing. I might have to watch my own footage on how the hell I put these on the last time. And I'm pretty sure, unless they changed these uh, for some odd reason, which wouldn't be surprising, I just use a socket. So did, did, did amount change? Did the carb slightly change? I don't know. Let me know. Because all my sockets get stuck, and that's not good. I know, guys. This is all fun, exciting, and riveting stuff. And, of course, I'm working on the harder side because the coil's right here. Yeah, it's too much of a yeah, the throttle cables binding. All right, we'll end up moving that. This is why we test again. And it's gonna, I'm gonna need another throttle cable too. Crap. Maybe not. We'll see how long that one is. Yeah, not hooking up this side. Uh, well, I could I could throw the bar on. Um, but as far as uh, hooking it up, hooking it up, not doing that yet because we have to get the car running, sync them, and then you uh, then you connect these bars. 
Only reason I have that one connected is for starting purposes. I have some throttle control. I at least can start it off on one side of an engine. If that makes any sense at all to you guys. There we go. This way you don't have to slop so much. All right, so that's there. So we need fuel system now. What is that noise? I got tree service coming out soon. All right, fuel. How am I going to run fuel? I can run it back and over, honestly. And tee it down there. I might actually do that. That sounds like a that sound that sounds vaguely like a plan. Oh, I could put this pan back on. Ugh. I'm gonna to have to severely modify this. We have we have lots of holes. That one's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do cover where the AC bracket was and cover these. Yep. Still going, it's go, it's go, it's going. It, it, we are moving still in a direction. You know, seven steps forward and you know, 337 backwards. Yeah, about right. All right, well, let's, let's. that ain't effort on my part. I, I, I installed it and now I uninstalled it. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I gotta plumb, uh, plumb the carbs right now. That is, that is where I'm at. How am I gonna, I, I still don't, I don't want, I just, I really just don't want to at this point. I'm tired and sleepies. All right, status update. I got this thing, which will be, uh, you know, passenger side carb, boop, boop, hard line, because if I run through the back, I don't trust rubber. I know many of you guys probably use it, but I don't. So it comes down, down to this thing. This will loop around to the passenger side car or driver side carburetor, and then that'll connect, you know, to the frame tunnel. But right now, I have science going on, and you know that's going to be a great thing because I'm involved. Um, doing one of two things: testing out the circuit that I'm going to be pulling from on the dash uh, for key on uh, to trigger the pump. And also, I got to drain the tank. So let's see how much fuel's in there. And uh, key's on already. Battery's not plugged in because I want to be on the side of, uh-oh, if I got to shut it down real quick. So this should actually work. Pump's on. And some bitch, it is. Wow, there, were, there really wasn't any fuel in here. I ran her right down to E. Absolutely calculated. All right. So I know that system works. Stay. <clears throat> so I know that system at least works. Um, just got to run a wire. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to check the connectors in the back and maybe pull off the original because if you remember probably one of my first, first video or second video, I don't remember. Uh, they ran a red wire, and that's actually what I'm connected into, and I just looped there, I'll just show you. I looped it over the floor, uh, just because I know it's connected to the pump, and I didn't feel like putting another hole in the car if I had to, didn't have to. But, yeah, that red wire that was, you know, going from the front to the back, I just have it looped into the back of the fuse block on the circuit I'd be, what I'd be pulling from. 
So seems like it works, so we're good there. Um, what I can do is back there is all the connectors. Um, I'm pretty sure the fuel pump, the uh, original fuel pump wire is back there. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can make that work um, because if I can splice off the ignition, green, and get pump power forward, we're doing that. So that sounds like a much better idea. But, all right, let me continue running this stuff. Uh, you're not missing anything. I'm putting, uh, I'm gonna put that line on or get this front pump. I don't know, I'll, I'll bring it along. I'm, I'm still trying to come up with a plan. And we know how they go with me. They're, they're, they're just terrible. Basically, I'm uh, figuring it out as I go on this one because nothing's really standard. Oh, and also because it's an AC car, I'm pretty sure I have to pull the, the uh, well, I have to change the center, excuse me. I've changed the center, but I have to pull the tank to change the fuel line. Um, but because it's an AC car, you got that thing. So, 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 so slowly but surely, we're, we're doing things very slowly and surely that they give us. Where, where does it actually come through? Right there, right there. And we'll shorten it on the other end. If, if, if you fish, just fish. There we go, all right. And we'll end up shortening this um, as needed. So that's gonna be the whatever it is. I know, so, oh, yeah, whatever. So technical, can't, can't hear me, can't see me, I'm, I'm going, going awesome. All right, fuel crossover. Line, like I said, you can run rubber. I know a bunch of people do it, me, I don't. Um, so, something about running a rubber line past if well you guys probably would know if you have a Volkswagen most likely if not there's the fan back there something about running the rubber line past the fan because I've gotten well actually on this car that wire looks like it found a fan for the what sensor whatever position sensor so uh yeah let's uh let's not do that and it's bent away so it's not even on the fan or touching so you know Little, little little bit of safety if you you know if I can call that I don't think this fits does it can we can we science in here yes maybe also I've been complaining a lot because of uh well usually I take these engine covers off when I do this stuff and I have yet to and now I'm at the point where I'm stubborn and I don't want to Because at this point, I got this far. But usually I pull the engine covers. All right, now, science your way out. I don't know why I didn't on this one, to be honest with you. All right, so that's plumbed in back there. This line, which is fuel in. Those clamp. Uh, I gotta lower that radio. But yeah, this will be the fuel end to the T. If science, you know, is correct, I got the size right. Or the run for the other one right. All right, that's on. So that's good. Lower this radio. More than a woman! All right. And last one, I had a hose clamp. Last one's just gonna go to this carburetor, so. Now we got a sausage. All this down through. Make it look like I knew what I was doing this entire time. All right, one, one more itty bitty turny. We'll call it good. All right, two more itty bitty turnies. Oh, and the red stuff, if you guys want to know, uh, I'd probably say in my other videos, but that red stuff's just wire loom insulation. Um, just keep the heat down. 
hopefully prevent like a vapor lock issue. I mean, that's my theory. I'll probably end up mounting this over so it's not all floppity with uh, a clamp. But yeah. All right, fuel system up here, good. Let's go under, get, get this thing attached down here. All right. I mean, it's, it's attaching fuel line, so I'm not really gonna show much, but uh, if you were doing a fuely inversion, you have two lines. I don't know if you can even see because the screen's facing the wrong way. You have these two lines that come out. This, the bottom one, that one, that's return. Top one, out. So you wanna connect to the out, to the engine, and then you just cap that one. Um, you can cap it, leave it open. Um, I've teed them before. Uh, varying degrees of success, and it also cuts down on vapor lock because of anything the carbs can't eat, and it'll send it back into the system. Uh, like I said, varying degrees of success on that. I've also had it where it's starved the carbs. So, with that said, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cap it on this end or on the out so nothing gets in the line, and then uh, we'll cap the tank side as well. So, all right, let me, let me put that line on, and then we'll go up front and figure, figure, figure out how to plumb that because we got to pull the tank to start plumbing that plan. And i got to find a fuel center. I know I bought one. All right, new battery stuff. Let's, let's take this out. Hopefully it's uh, pretty straightforward because, uh, well, I'm not gonna lie. I've, I've never had to decommission one of these before as far as take everything out. Because I'm just gonna pull it and, well, pull it. There's no sense in it going back. I mean, I might put it in just for prosperity. This line wasn't even tight. I knew, I felt that one. And like I told, like, like I told every, you know, the owner and stuff like that. Um, to basically recommission this thing, you're, you're, you have to get all new lines. Um, Will, will these hold a charge? Maybe. Um, most, most likely not. Uh, they're dry rotted and cracked. So, you can save the stuff. The compressor has to be rebuilt. Um, condenser maybe works. Uh, the fan, or... Eva Whichever the evaporator, evaporator. Yeah, no, evaporator. Yeah, condenser. Uh, blower motor is locked up. This doesn't turn on, but that's not saying it's not connected. I don't think it is, actually. I saw some ground wire and stuff disconnected. Um, if that even holds... I mean, there's a, bu there's a bunch of... Uh, there's a bunch of things. I don't even know what size that is. Big. If you're squeamish, skip ahead. Hoping this works and not burns down the car. They should be aluminum fittings, so I'm hoping it's just a quick pop, 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 off. Uh. Vibration wrench. that <laughs> pull that one out of there that's the thermostat -y thingy and this one where the hell does that go Power wire. 
which is also I am I am cutting them but I'm also leaving the tails if that makes any sense so you, you instead of labeling them you, you can put this back by color So in theory, someone can recommission this. <clears throat> but there are more modern systems out there. Oh yeah, freaking. Somebody was living in there. Evicted. All right. Vent nozzle. Heat getting those off. I'm going to have to. Mine's still a thing, okay. That one's at least dry rod enough to come on. Oh, another mouse house. Awesome. That's a good one too. Come on, just work with me. Work, work with me a bit more. Work, work, work with me like you like me. There we go. Thank you. All right. And pretty much get to all those lines. That's that's good. That's still connected, sort of. All right. Let's get this fuel tank off or out. Sending unit. <clears throat> there we go. A little bit of wiggle, a little bit of jiggle. There. Out. Not, not the superior design. Broken. <laughs> Anywho, the, uh, the white sludge got to this guy. Uh, new one. Man, that gasket seemed a lot thicker too. No, I guess they're the same. It's probably just wool. New one. Without all the white death. Let me wipe that ring off just, you know, for safety. It should be good. A flashlight. It is warm today. It's going to be warm yesterday. Or warm tomorrow, but it was also warm yesterday. <sighs> Pretty sure we're down, not sh actually, I don't know. This one corner is looking weird. On. All right. Yeah, it's sitting weird. All right. Whew. I need screwdrivers and lines. Let me grab them real quick. Oh, are in plugs so I can get this going. And those clamps. All right, I'll be back. I get some tools to round up to run this line, and then you know, put this all back together. She's, she's, we're moving in a direction, guys. It, it, it's fine. All right. Other thing I had to make, a uh, plug for the return. 
if you're uh, making a plug, I highly recommend. I'm gonna have to just, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, something in my throat. Anywho, if you're making a plug, don't plug it with a bolt. There's a high likelihood that the fuel will spin through it. Get a quarter inch rod and poof, shove it in there and then clamp it. Um, less likely or less prone to leak. But then again, like I said, do, you know, do what you guys want. Now I need to find the, the out, because I can't remember on these things which one's out. Going up! All right, good enough, low enough. One of these lines is gonna come through. I don't know which one. We have, all right, this one. This one's out. Hey, focus. Hey, found it. You just gotta, you know, well, in my case, go through every vehicle I own and, you know, because I don't ever take stuff out. Locate it. Clamp. You go there. You connect here. Perfect. I got the wrong freaking bit on there. Of course I do. Don't take the clamp, I want it up a little further. Move it up a little further. Now tighten the clamp. Let go. Clamp tight. All right. Whew. You cannot believe how easy one of these conversions are. I mean, it's, it's super, I mean, super simple. Everything's straightforward. <clears throat> Never have any issues. Everything cooperates. It's, uh, I mean, I wish I could do one of these every, every day. That line just can hang out. And this one, let me lube it up and it on there because this is quarter. Not 5 sixteenths. Like I said, you can get quarter to go on easy or easy enough. I'd just rather not. And like I said, the big reason is the pump I ordered is a 5 sixteenths pump, knowing that this is a, or a 5 eighths pump, knowing that, uh, whatever. I, the pumps, whatever order I said, what? How did you change sizes? It's probably because you're not one of my clamps. It's probably, it's probably a stock clamp I had. Let go. You have to cooperate with me at least some. Go under that. Thank you. Now you go this way. Now you go that way. Fuel tank. Don't even, don't even start with me. Go back under there. Now you go there. You're not needed. We've established this. You go that way. You go this way. Why are you so far that way? What are you, what, what are you doing? You go on. You get, get up here. Go installed. It is not. What? Are, what? Like honestly, what are you doing? Oh, you're on this now. Don't, don't go on that. Simple. Perfect. Adorable. Good. Enough. I need an extension to get those bolts in. 
Yeah, fuel system, done. Let's go under. Whew. Ah! All right, let me grab the, get this thing in the air, get on there, and get it set up, and we'll start running the pump. Whew. So that we can send, you know, juices to the back, finally. And how are we doing on time? 31, uh, I might change out this memory card. Sounds like a good plan. Hey, let's grab these so I'm not looking for a flashlight and everything else. I probably will, you know. <sighs> Can't keep nothing nice. All right, because all of this is going well, get, get, get out of here. Get rid of the old pump. Or the old new pump. I am going to, I am going to save it. That bracket's completely toast. And what did I see? Yeah, this was a new filter. Look at all the crap that came in it. That's why I like running filters. Just put you over there. All right. That's off these. This mount is terrible. It's already broken. But that's where I'm going to have to mount this new pump. Ugh! In a generalish area. Oh my, where am I, where am I going to put this? Put it here? I can put it here. Put it here. My thing is I just don't want this fuel line to run, slide on temporarily, please, thank you. I just don't want this fuel line to run like stupid low to where to get caught. like it'll work. All right. Let's cut that line. Ah! Right about there should be fine. Ugh. This end is the filter. This is in. Sometimes they're labeled. This one's not because, you know, Chinese. For most four and six cylinder engines. Good. Let's hope this pr fuel pressure is correct. Close clamp. Good. Anywho, those are in. At least you know I'm not lying about putting them in. Pump's nice, it's secured, it ain't going anywhere. Fuel line. You, you don't, you screw on. All right, where, where does the screwdriver go? Why is it in my pocket? I'm happy I checked. This wire was never actually connected. Um, I, you probably won't be able to see it, but Whoa. It probably won't focus, but there's no jaw lines or crimping. This uh, connector, completely missed. It just slid out. So whatever they were doing with that wire or whoever was doing it with the wire, um, well, ah. The car was work. If it was working, it wasn't because uh, they ran that wire. Put it that way, because this thing wasn't installed correctly. Another reason I hate them. But yeah, I'll cut the sheath back. 
I'm gonna use the ground. I'm gonna rewire that because this got mutilated. This wire's still good. I'm gonna keep it here just in case I have to, for some reason, use that and run. Um, it's already in the car and I know, I know the fuse, I know the circuit I'm gonna, I would use would be using working. Yes, useful. All right, real quick. Um, plumbed, watertight, uh, removable connectors. So if big China up there uh, ever, ever fails, well, uh, you can replace it easily or easily enough. So fuel system is done. You're gonna obviously have to come on under here and just zip tie and tidy stuff up. Uh, so stuff isn't just hanging all willy, willy nilly like. But actually, I might not have to. I mean, there's factory clamps here. I can snug this wire into. Get it out of the way. That's what we'll do. Power to this pump. Ugh. Yeah, let me try to get power to the pump. Uh, through the original wiring. I think I have an idea uh, if it'll work. If it works, I'll, uh, I'll shoot you in and show you what I got going on. But give me a second to diagnose or to, to probe around with some wires. Like I said, I think I could jump the pump possibly from the junction block in the car, but I'm not sure if that actually feeds backwards from the doubler relay or if it goes to the doubler relay from the pump. Anyway, I know where there's a fuel pump wire. Um, it just, if it's gonna work or not, I guess is what I'm getting at. So give me a second to diagnose and then, yeah, I'll be back. Oh yeah, what I was saying, uh, <coughs> put that on the shelf. Yeah, while I'm under here and I saw it in the camera. The uh, condenser or whatever, yeah, condenser. This fan is, well, that's bent onto it. But yeah, this thing ain't, isn't gonna work again. It's, it's plumb messed up. So, like I said, not really, not, not really having hard feelings about pulling the unit. So, I don't know if I'm gonna put it back in and seal the holes, or I'll probably just shove it back in. It's literally one bracket at this point. Yeah, we'll put it back in. This way I don't have to patch holes. Thinking, we'll just plug it with a big unit. All right, let me do some uh, wiring and I'll be back. Focus. Thank you. Anywho, car's on. Don't do what I do for diagnosing. Uh, I know I left the wires long intentional, like all this stuff back here. Shove the pick through said wire, stay. I don't know if you can see it. This wire plugs in under your back seat, blue and red. And I don't know if it'll pick up in my mic, but that's pump. So this is off the ignition. That's the green wire I ran for the ignition. So I'm gonna cut that, splice that in with the fuel pump, solder them together, heat shrink them, all that happy horse stuff. And now that that line will power forward because it doesn't need to, doesn't need to go to the relay anymore. I could cut. I mean, really, I could cut that terminal and splice them all together and make it all good, but um, I'm not just in case they want to use it for something. Got it far enough back to where you need, can splice it together if you need to. So let me get that done. I'll be right back and my music cut off. Great. Frank was on. Sinatra, that is. I'll be back. And I got to change out my memory card. What is going on? I, I like lost everything. I have some gas in the system. Everything's wired. Uh, let's crank it. First, make sure it doesn't catch on fire. Uh, this, this wire can go away now. Um, let's make sure it doesn't catch on fire and also make sure that this pump's not going to overpressurize the carbs. If I have enough fuel in it, which I hopefully should. Oh, dumbass, put the... You gotta connect the battery. All right, here, picking up fuel. All right, 
There's fuel in that one. Yep, we got fuel in them. They're not blowing through the bowls. Probably gonna need more gas, but for right now, that's fine. I can hear it uh, sounds like it's aerating a bit, so I definitely need to put some more fuel in that thing. Do I even have any more? I doubt it. Yeah. All right, gas run in the morning. I think I have like a gallon somewhere that I can put in. Let me find it, dump it in, see. A gallon and a half. Let me dump this in and I'll be back. Got to find a funnel again. Hopefully this will shut the pump up some because it, it's it, you hear it's surging and I don't like that. So I'm hoping it's just because it's aerating. Does that make sense? Too low on fuel. I'll be back. All right guys, hopefully this is the home push. Getting this thing going. It should be one distributor. I am 180 out. Beautiful. All right, that's there. Coil's gonna need to go back in. It's not a big deal. Gotta get rid of those wires. Oil pressure, man, we still gotta wire that in. The ignition, I still gotta wire. For what I'm doing currently, this is going to work. Ah, oh, we gotta still put the, at least the muffler is easy to put on on this thing. Oh, well, really we don't, because Breeze kind of threw a muffler anyway, but you know what? I'll do the right thing and put it on. One. Two. Four. Three. Coil wire. Let me find one or make one real quick. I don't remember what I did with the one that was on here. Because it wasn't bad. It just wasn't, you know, I lost it, I guess is what I'm getting at. I just want I put it up here. There's the belt. Guys, I just never removed the damn thing. But it's already a lengthened one. I don't have to make one. You've seen me make them on this channel many, many times before. When I do any setup, this is extremely long. But it will work. It will work if you want to go in to the cap. You're in. You're in and you're on. This is extremely long. Wrap it all the way around the coil because you get more, you know, the, 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 the things. All right. That's light. Let's time this thing real quick. All right, got my timing light set up. Sorry, I'm not looking at you. Hold on. Ugh. Sinkers, stuff things. 
All right, timing, timing light set up. I got my probe probe. We'll set static, negative side of the coil, and then just ground. We'll, we'll hold it. We'll wedge it there. All right, let's turn the key. Uh, which I lost. Uh. All right, pump's running, oil light's on, charging light's on, light is light is on. All right, we'll give her a whirl right there. Give some pumps. It was squirting. Make sure it's still squirting. All right, about six pumps. See what she's got. Final. She lives. Super oil idle. Sitting two and a half. Usually they run about five. That noise is this damn shield. Shush. All right. All right, about five on that side. It's so quiet. All right, five and a half. A little bit more. He's definitely burning something. That 
driver's passenger side. This is driver. Driver's side's a little smoky. But I am, still gotta adjust the valves, but I am just trying to get oil to circulate. Yeah, that side's hurting some. Hopefully it rains and she'll come around, because it's running nice. Back off the timing some. I think I have another distributor. I'm gonna swap it out. I'm getting some weird readings uh, right now. You can tell she's 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 doing her thing. You gotta remember, this is still a berryman mix, so stuff's happening. It just smells weird. But she's running good. Let's kill her into a refire. All right, hot start. Not bad. All right. Ugh, whew. I think I'm gonna wrap it up for the night. Um, sounds good. I gotta fix this heat shield, steering column, throttle cable. Um, I'm gonna swap the distributor because I'm not. I'm not really sold with that one. It's. Uh, I'll break. I'll fire it up tomorrow. We'll adjust valves and all that stuff. Um, that's the cool, change the oil. Um, I'm actually gonna dump the oil before I leave tonight. This way, it'll be ready to do everything tomorrow. But um, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm getting a weird reading right now. Right, right now it's sitting, yeah. I don't know how to say, uh, full advance right now is a 30, it's almost like that uh, uh, white beetle. Full advance right now is sitting at like 38. And I cannot, when I set, when I set it at, uh, I set it at 10 initially, backed it off to eight, then went to seven. And now it's, I don't know, it's, way, it's, it's, it's completely weird. Um, so I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little baffled on that one. So what I would do is I'll throw a, uh, um, I'll throw another distributor in, hopefully get a different reading. If I don't get a different reading, some, some, something else is different and uh, we're just gonna tune it to where it runs. If that makes any sense. Because those timing marks on the flywheel mean absolutely nothing right now. Whether it's the, the slash for TDC, or because you heard it didn't want to start on the TDC, or if it's the dot for whatever it is, seven and a half or five or what, the, the other number you want to use. So, um, yeah, gonna dump the oil tonight, let it, uh, let it all drain out. We'll refill it tomorrow. Good thing is the fuel system, I don't see any leaks under the car. Everything seems dry. Hopefully we'll uh, 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 adjust valves, dump fresh oil in, take it for a rip. Um, we gotta put the steering column together still, shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll be on the road tomorrow. We're gonna go early morning push. I gotta get the throttle cable and that's not gonna be until 10. We're gonna go mid afternoon push. To, to get this thing on the road. Plan. All right, the GoPro's handy. Um, drain the oil real quick, because I'm unmiked, but 
it is coming out like straight that's basically straight gasoline in the crankcase it's not that hot of oil so <clears throat> yeah fresh oil change I'll get a couple of them and hopefully we'll be back you know good to go but yeah she she at least runs in the morning we'll get back on it and call it good but yeah GoPro is convenient I just picked it up and uh hit go because I'm charging everything else <sighs> yeah also once this is done Dre I'm gonna kick on the uh uh ignition and just make make sure uh like I said I don't see any fuel dumping down the carbs but make sure that uh we don't we don't get a leak again because if we get a leak we know where it's coming from and uh yeah all right so tomorrow throttle cable steering column valves oil in the engine and yeah tighten everything up i guess because their carbs are synced i just gotta lock everything down and hope it works and take it out so stay tuned i'll be back all right i caught the thing on the gopro but uh the amount of fuel in this engine pretty it was pretty thin um it didn't smell that thin until I drained it. Uh, I got it on the GoPro, like I said. Even for running it yesterday, it did not get that hot to splatter. Um, other thing, I wasn't going to record the oil change other than doing it. Um, do, not, do not RTV the gaskets on. It's, it's counterproductive. Because... Now I gotta take time to try to scrape this thing and get it off because I don't have another strainer that I know where it is. I'm pretty sure I have a spare. Just don't know where the hell I put it. Uh, and the plate, same thing. A little sludgy, not too terrible. So let me get this cleaned up, get this all bolted on. Um, those were paper gaskets. I used the style gasket. And what I mean by paper, I mean like the actual paper like element so let me let me let me take time to clean all this up unless i find my other strainer which i don't know where i put it um and yeah we'll uh get this thing back down and hopefully what i gotta change the distributor and we'll re refire it and see if i can get the timing to be happy i guess is what i'm getting at because last night it ran but where that distributor where the distributor is and where my timing gun is telling me Aren't, dry, aren't, aren't jiving and I know the drive could be in wrong so and so forth and you know it's just it's just how it is to where I'm used to seeing you know the distributor facing one way but if the drive's in weird it could be facing the other way but the erroneous reading I'm getting is telling me that maybe a weight's screwed up so if you set it to you know just base time at zero they usually fire up it kind of did um but I went to my normal thing of 10, or and it just was not happy. Uh, backed it all the way down, and what am I? Usually 32 is the end of the world, give or take 32, 34 uh, for full advance. This thing's running about 38, 39 full advance. So way, way something wrong um, for it not to be happy. Gonna double check the valves. I think they were fine. Uh, we had it on the bench, um, so. Not really concerned about them. Uh, it sounds fine, but I want to get actual oil in it and not zero weight. Also see if the uh, oil will fix the poof out the carbs because it might, might be dieseling, but it's the driver's side uh, that has the issue right now as far as the smoke. Um, passenger side seems healthy, so Little, little, little troubleshooting we got going on right now. Um, but the engine overall does sound healthy and I'm happy about that. So let me, let me get oil in this thing, check the valves and uh, yeah, report back on. Hopefully we'll fire it up and finish this thing up. It's of course raining today, so uh, hopefully it dries. Uh, I can take it out because we got other cars coming in. I know. Bad planning on my end does not equal, you know, compromise on yours for the most part. Weather, on the other hand, I'll take, I can't control it. So, 
All right, let me let me continue spending three and a half hours trying to trying to clean plates and get get an oil into this engine. Also, when you tighten those nuts, don't go crazy. It's just I think it's like eleven inch pounds, which is just kind of not not ridiculous. Don't mark me on the torque spec. It's just snug. If you try to tighten it, you'll probably strip it or break it. All right. That's my ramble for right now. I'll be back. Another reason you don't put RTV in the system, because then you gotta dig them out of all the freaking nuts. Wonder why sometimes oil changes take so long? It's because of this. The immense amount of cleanup that has to be done because of somebody else. Stay on. Oh. These look fine-ish. Clean your threads too. Just some brake clean. It aids, nope. Every one of these has RTV in them. You won't see it or won't be able to see it. Yeah, because when you do the bigger the glob, the better the job. I don't know if, yeah, just don't lose that one. Man, it just, it just comes out. This is how you end up damaging the, th the screws, the threads, everything. Because now you got so much resistance on, on it. Damn it. Ugh. Now you have so much resistance, you know, clogging the threads that everything doesn't uh, move as designed. So yeah, no RTV. Not to mention, if you RTV and it slushes over, it's going to go into your pump. Or at least, you know, clog your screen. Depending. I've seen some get make it all the way past the screen into the pump. So, yeah. RTV on some things, not on most. Like I said, I'm guilty of using it. I show you guys I use it. It's just a time and a place. Like everything. So, let me continue to do you know a five minute oil change in three and a half hours sounds about right i'll be back you know one thing that never fails is it's always the the last one that needs to be adjusted doesn't want to this one's not bad but seeing how i mean it's it's loose um but seeing how i just went and adjusted every other one I'm not just gonna leave one. And you could probably tell by the head of this one, it hasn't, I, I, I honestly don't think these valves have ever been adjusted or they haven't been adjusted in a long time. And I'm not just saying that because it's sat, I'm saying it because uh, all these nuts are basically locked up. Well, the nuts are free, the adjusters are basically locked up and I'm, I'm cammed out to the point where I really only have forward left and it's starting to move easier run it out put it back in run it out put it back in I think I have a fatter blade screwdriver I could possibly use oh I think we might have got it Maybe. <sighs> yes. Threads look fine, but yeah, that whole 
that whole head. Focus, focus on this thing. Come on. Yeah, that whole head, if you could see, it's basically cammed out. So that's why I was fighting. Every time I try to loosen it, it just can't, you know, cam up. So I use that jam nut as well a jam nut. The tappet looks good. It's not screwed up. So let me figure something out. Um, I'll probably just re canotch this and reuse it. Because it's not, the adjuster's not bad. It's just the top. Here's what I came up with. I just tigged. Well, you can barely see again. Come on, tracking. Track something. Here. Boop. I just added nubs. Yeah, they're not perfect. They work, though. Um, so for this purpose, I'll be able to screw this thing in. Like I said, the flat or the, the thing, the, uh, the contacts, the valve, it's fine. If it was cracked or rounded or weird to wear, I wouldn't be doing this because, like I said, I do have others. But if it's just the, if it's just this part, I'm not going to give up good, well, you know, I'm not going to say good stock, but good stock for something that's not technically bad. To me, it just makes no sense. I mean, you guys probably can, you guys might do whatever you want. Um, but I have technology. And by having technology allows me to, uh, say, cheat, cheat the system. So I'm not bound by uh, having to constantly replace parts. If I can mildly fix them, I can fix them. Brand new distributor, wired up. I just robbed the electronics out of the old one. And uh, I'm just gonna throw it into this one. Because the electronics should be good. That's in. Battery's still connected. Key on. Ow. Ugh. Let's see if I get it to. All right, shut this off. Ugh. Where'd that flashlight go? Now I haven't touched the carburetor, so they should still be dry up top. And that one is. Like I said, just make sure they're not leaking down. And that one is. All right. I'm gonna dump five gallons of fuel in this thing just to get more fuel in it. Um, because <coughs> the fuel that's in it is a hot berry min mix. Um, you know, trying to clean clean up the uh, doobly do. Pop in. I don't think that's the reason for the smoke. But I got five gallons, I'm gonna dump into it. Uh, then yeah, we'll fire this thing up. All right, almost five gallons of fuel. I think the wife stole my big funnel. So I'm trying to fill it through the transmission funnel and yeah, that's taking forever. So we should have over a half a tank right now. Pumps running, fuel gauge is fuel gauging. And it says we got a quarter. I don't buy it. All right. Oh boy, cylinder rate number one. I'm hoping, like I said, the distributor was the bane of my existence right now. All right, give it a couple pumps. Three pumps, hit the bump button. Like I said, it's just static time. We'll compare it from last, uh, last start to this start because uh, they should be about equivalent. Fire it up.
And this time, my timing light is right where it needs to be. I'm pretty sure I have it in the clip where I had to ba back it up. Yeah, we're dead nut zero. So yeah, that was a junk distributor. And it's right, like I said, right where it needs to be. Unbelievable. And yeah, it was tossed that away. Just the, uh, you know, standard no name. I mean, don't get me wrong, I buy no names as well. But, well, my no names work to a certain extent. Like I said, I know how to read them to know if they're right or they're wrong. All right. Five and a half. Five and a half, they're still sank, synced. Sounds good. Let me retune again. Oh, monoxide, please leave the building. I do not want you in my chat. It's not really on the fuel side, so. Unfortunately, what I think has happened is this thing ran rich so long it washed the cylinders and it's one of them on the driver. That damn shroud. I didn't miss much. I raised the idle. It's bad. I had resynced them. Everything's as good as it can be. Idle still set where I wanted it to be. But driver side, that pipe here, because I can isolate the sides again. Driver side. Smoke. Passenger side. Not that much smoke. Whatever white is coming out of the, uh, it's like burning oil almost, coming out of the driver. Right. Think, I think we are dialed in. I like where everything is. Setting wise, tighten the distributor. I gotta let this place gas out. It is terrible in here. But um, yeah, lock down the carbs. All the settings are good. They're synced in. Um, gotta do some quick wiring for this oil pressure sender uh, gauge. I gotta change out the oil pressure sender and just, you know, button up some wires. But home stretch, we're looking good. All right. Let me do some cleanup work back here and then we'll do the uh, um, thing in the front. Steering column and all that stuff. 
man, it is bad in here. And with the good, out with the bad, you know. This is why, this is why you know, mechanics, well, at least my end, don't, don't do anything uh, illegal as far as substances because all I got to do is breathe this stuff all day. So, all right. I'll be back when I get this engine bay cleaned up. I'll bring in and show you the aftermath, but this place really has to vent. Um, yeah, this place really has to vent, and I'll, uh, we'll button up the interior and hopefully take it on a test drive, most likely tomorrow, because we're running late in the day. Thank you, Derby, in rain. Well, they had a marathon, some rain, traffic. People, people just decided to drive today, apparently. Wasn't happy about it, but all right. Whew. Let me get some oxygen, like real oxygen, so I don't pass out. Pretty sure the fire department's gonna come, because it looks like I got a fire going on. Everything rolling out the door. Yep. All right, I got the car running. Back probed, yeah, the switches. Got no power going down there. Like I said, I thought this car did have brake lights. I don't know where they went, nor do I know where the power went. Give me a minute to diagnose, see if I can find them. Because we kind of need them. We have brake lights. I screwed up. Well, yeah, I did. I said I thought we had brake lights, or I remember us having brake lights. I got crap all over me from crawling under this thing. Turns out, whenever I pulled the gas tank, you know, went through the wiring diagram, back probing stuff, trying to get no power to the switch. Um, switch I put in works, which surprisingly enough. But anyway, when I did the tank, this red and uh, yellow wire, yeah, came disconnected. It was still in there, but didn't, uh, didn't make connection. So now we have brake lights. That took way, way too long, and it's completely my fault. <sighs> this is why I ops check stuff before I get it, because I knew it worked, and the only wire we messed with on this car was the, uh, the black wire for the ignition, which shouldn't have affected anything. Then I was second-guessing myself with putting up the fuse block. Did I get something screwed up? So on and so forth. So now we have brake lights. I'm going to basically button this thing up to drive it to make sure it works as it sort of should and then we'll worry about like putting seats in and you know cleaning up might as well look like it's uh you know destroyed yeah still got to button up the under the trunk area put the put stuff together so all right that's in the morning this this took way too long um I think it, well, I'm thinking I'm going on midnight right now, which is ridiculous. It's ridiculous the time that I have in this thing. So we'll get a, yeah, hopefully test drive in the morning. Oh, hoping, hoping the brakes work. That'd be, we'll find out. They're stiff, so I don't know. Stay tuned in the morning. Hopefully we'll have a test drive. If not, I'm gonna cap the video because development's happened and I'll let you know why. All right, guys. Well, kinda as promised, capping this video. Back on the normal camera and mic uh, because the GoPro uh, audio does what it wants to do. Anyway, capping the video because developments, like normal, have always happened. Not gonna be able to do a test drive and the main reason is I'm hoping all the wheel cylinders are shot. Pretty sure I'll have it in a video. I was watching this wheel um, for rotation because usually driver side spins. Well, the problem being right now is, yeah, it's, it's plumb locked. E-brake's not on. I mean, it's, yeah, they're pretty much all like that. I was able to back off the adjusters on this side and it's still super tight. Fronts are rolling, but questionable. 
Same thing with this side. They roll, but they're questionable. Stay. I can't get any adjustment out of them. All the adjusters, except for this back passenger, were, are locked up. So I'm hoping I'll be able to slap some uh, wheel cylinders in them. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they're just, you know, seized and be good because I did crack the bleeder valve on this side, hoping, well, if you, if you have a locked up wheel, if you crack the bleeder valve and it like <laughs> sprays and then it moves, nine times out of 10, it's your soft line. Your soft line's not flowing both ways. It's basically pushing through and then it doesn't have the pressure to go back through the constriction. Like, you know, arteries, mainly mine, I'm fat. But um, it didn't do that, it just, it just dribbled out. So I'm thinking the wheel cylinders are locked. So I'm gonna replace all the wheel cylinders, all four wheel cylinders, just because um, I don't have adjusters. Looking through the inspection ports, even though I was told that the brake job was done well, knew when they bought it, but the car sat. Yeah, I digress and regress. Uh, we'll put new wheel cylinders in, new shoes on it, and hopefully get the brakes done because like I said, we, I gotta unlock the adjusters. I can't even adjust them. So it is now stuck on my lift. We're not doing a test drive. And uh, again, well, cliffhanger. Hopefully next video is just doing a quick, you know, lack of a better term, shoe slap, reshoeing this thing, some, uh, some new lines or no, hopefully no lines. Oh man, I just hurt myself with that comment. Hopefully some wheel cylinders, some shoes and uh, test drive because it is, it, it's the engine, the engine's tuned Good. I, I did. Uh, I did have it running for about thirty minutes earlier. Oh, stage right. Yeah, I had it running for about thirty minutes earlier, and uh, it's starting to. It's starting to clear up. The smoke's not as prevalent. Stuff like that, and I'm really excited to get this thing on the road. Um, but with that said, the brakes are working too well. It's just here, which is also not helping me because that Jeep has to go that way and it doesn't fit because of a nice roof under this. Yeah, so a little press for time. I already got wheel cylinders and uh, um, shoes. Next video, we'll slap them on and hopefully be on the road. So, anywho, if you liked this episode, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. If you do, I promise you, we will chit chat. As always, thanks for watching and hopefully see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.